Hey everyone. Uh, so, I kind of want to talk about the. I have a bunch of videos, like just that I shot when I had the OM1 last year, and I can't actually believe that it's already been almost a year since I've sold it. Um, I sold it in January. Damn, I sold it in January. It's already December. Um, but I had full intentions. I had all intentions to to do more videos. Um, time and um, just other things just kind of got the best of me. Uh, so I'm trying to make it up and trying to post about what I recorded of the OM-1 because it was it's still a great camera. Um, I would still recommend it for a majority of, uh, of uh, Micro Four Thirds favorite shooters or even shooters that are trying to get into sports, wildlife. Um, the G9 II did come out already so that one's probably taking a lot more precedence, but um, some people still like the handling and better uh, the the handling of the uh, of how Olympus and OM systems has the, the handling, I, and that's that's me too. <clears throat> the um, I wanted to talk about the raw out of it, um, uh, just because I don't really see a lot of people talk about it, and it's a weirdly timed video because. Um, the very first video I've ever uploaded was actually about the EM1 Mark III and the ProRes in that camera. The, the menu is a little different. The uh, performance is nearly identical. There's just one or two things that it does better and one or two things that it does worse. Uh, to set up the camera to shoot ProRes RAW, you're going to have menu. Now I already have HDMI output setting set in my menu so I can change it quickly. Assuming you don't have um, you don't have it set up this way, which I'll make another video to show how it's set up in my menu. Um, scroll to the video settings tab, and in the video settings tab, scroll to submenu 5, which is sound recording and connection. Um, there you'll find the um, HDMI output. Uh, once in, you're in that HDMI output, change output mode from its current setting to RAW if it's not already in RAW. The uh, Ninja 5 will automatically set. It'll read that the camera's output's been changed to RAW if it hasn't already done it or if it's not already set up. You'll see a little prompt that says that. The best thing about the OM-1 RAW recording is now you can use the regular screen uh, versus the EM-1 Mark III where the screen is just blank. Uh, one thing I started doing when shooting in ProRes RAW is monitoring in PQ or HLG. There's so much more dynamic range in the ProRes RAW file, so monitoring in PQ or HLG is much more accurate of what the sensor will capture. But the OM-1 and the OM-1 Mark III are very alike, even down to the little things like not being able to record sound unless the camera is set to 48 kilohertz, 16 bit. The biggest advantage the OM-1 carries is the fact that you can now change both ISO and white balance in post. So now it's very much true raw recording with zero limitations here. Now they're obviously not completely alike. The OM-1 now records cinema 4K at the full field of view of the sensor. There is a note to this though. I should explain a bit. Both the EM-1 3 and the OM-1 are 20 megapixel sensors. They obviously do not record an open gate. <clears throat> it only records 4K's worth of information, which is limited to the center 4096 by 2160 for cinema 4K and 3840 by 2160 for regular 4K. But here's the thing. A 20 megapixel frame is, uh, for four thirds format anyways, 5184 pixels wide, 5184 pixels wide. So it doesn't make sense that the ProRes RAW footage from the OM-1 is the exact same dimension as the ProRes RAW footage out of the EM-1 III, but still have the full view of this, the, the sensor, not unless it's line skipped, which is in fact that. It's line skipped. For the most part, you don't notice it unless you really zoom into the footage. Or if you're shooting at lower light, the footage definitely is noticeably soft and not as detailed. 
which again most shooters wouldn't even notice this they, they most shooters won't even have a problem with this mostly because most video shooters have already gone to uh sony canon panasonic and even fuji hell even iphones have better video codecs compared to the uh ohm systems now uh just keep in mind oh the iphones are shooting prores internally now and that's just something i'm never gonna get over i'm kidding of course or am i anyway yeah so it's not as detailed as the em1 3 footage but you do get the field of view that matches the width of the sensor so if you're picking one over the other just to shoot prores raw then you'll have to pick which matters more to you um, if you are looking specifically for a Mic Four Thirds camera to use just to shoot ProRes RAW with, I'd look towards either the GH6, the GH5S, or one of the Z cams. Those cameras have much more choices. I have to pause right here. Um, I forgot to mention that um, Panasonic just updated the G9 Mark II with being able to record in ProRes RAW, so that's also an option. Um, and it looks like there's significantly more um, choices in how to shoot that as well. Um, so yeah, just wanted to add that note in. The OM-1 and EM-1 are great cameras, but they only do the most basic tasks when it comes to video codecs. While on the subject of the GH5S, I did find some old test footage so I was able to see and compare, it really is noticeably more detailed than the OM-1. This is simply because it's not line skipped. Uh, and it actually does use the full width of the sensor. I guess it's easier because the sensor is, uh, it's only like a 12 megapixel sensor. But all three cameras had the Olympus 12 to 40. Different times of the year, because I've had different those cameras, but it's the same lens. Oh, actually no, the OM-1 had the newer OM Systems 12 to 40 Mark II. So, Otherwise, there's no real difference in IQ there. I've actually made another video about how the OM-1 is essentially a sleeper cinema camera. I still stand by that statement. It really is a sleeper camera. Um, except that it did take out, for some reason they took out True24. I don't know why, and I don't know, that doesn't even benefit the camera, but the, even the EM-1 Mark II has True24. Um, but honestly, any camera outside of that, Honestly, any camera that you're trying to shoot a narrative with will be a cinema camera. What's really going to matter is the writing, the lighting, the acting, and the sound-ing. As a filmmaker, you have to navigate through all those elements and do your best to pull those ingredients together in a way that delivers, that delivers something that'll resonate with the person that's watching. That's what filmmaking really is. It's not the camera. It's not having the fanciest, biggest camera. None of that matters. Having a swooshy transition, that doesn't make you a filmmaker. A filmmaker tells an actual story. They tell, they tell a lesson. They show a motive, a conflict. They show perspective. They show character. That's really, that's really it. I think that's really it. Uh, but anyway, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate you guys. Oh, actually, that's not. I uh, got something fun, but um, I got it because I'm determined to shoot more stuff uh, next year, hopefully. Um, but I got this little dude. It's a uh, Canon V10. Um, wanted something that was a little more out of the way. Uh, but so far, it's been my absolute favorite little camera. The footage isn't as good as using the iPhone, believe it or not. Uh, or believe it, because it's a uh, older sensor in it. But it's fun to hold and talk to. It's uh, turned into uh, a great little partner. All right. That's it. Again, I really appreciate you guys um, all for randomly watching. I, um, I don't upload enough to really warrant any of you to watch and follow, but I do enjoy all the interaction, which is really the only reason I even attempt to do these. Um, well, literally just to talk and hang out with you guys. So 
<clears throat> thanks. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day. The V10 doesn't actually come with a cover. So like I just got this and I can't stop. It's so fun. <laughs>